Welcome to the Hap in the Bag Disc Golf Podcast, streaming to you as part of the Joe's Disc Golf Podcast Network. And here are your hosts, Ben, Joe, and RJ. Well, this is a hell of a way to start a drinking disc golf podcast. Just, I don't know, we're the three guys with half in the bag, kind of sucking at this intro thing because we're all half in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, three no, not very talented, um, not very sober hosts <laughs> of Half in the Bag. <laughs> I, I'm Joe. Uh, just go around the horn here. Uh, we got Ben. Yeah, they can't see you wave on an audio podcast. That's a good point. I guess they can't hear me. <laughs> <laughs> RJ, you want to try this one? <laughs> hey, hey, uh, Ben, wave a little bit harder. Maybe they'll be able to hear you. Hey, all sorts of special here. It's the first episode. We're learning lots of stuff right now. Someone's a little more than half in the bag. Yeah, someone never. got a head start. Would, that would never, never be the guy from Wisconsin that started drinking far before this started. Yeah, you know, I mean, the guy who pours the captain and Coke where it's captain and there's a dash of Coke sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Is that not how you're supposed to pour it? So that's then. how all my friends pour it. <laughs> that's when true. I'm your friend, that's the problem. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, you and Mark. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so as you can uh, tell, we're all friends here. We're all having a good time, enjoying ourselves, talking about disc golf, just trying something different. Uh, you know, broadcasting on the uh, uh, Joe's Disc Golf Podcast Network. Yeah, it's a network now. We got two podcast shows i apologize for the viewers from your podcast that thought it was good content and then they heard us talk no i think it's going to be the other way around (laughs) (laughs) i actually had some guy comment on one of my youtube videos because i also i record everything and then just upload it to youtube just because having a child now i can't do it live anymore and yes he he just commented under one of these like well i tried dot 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 I'm out. And I lost a subscriber that day. (laughs) I appreciate the honesty, though. I mean, (laughs) he he tried. I kind of want to know what I did wrong or if it's just one of those things where, you know, you just don't like. You know, I tried to listen to, uh, is it Nate Sexton that has a podcast? Probably. Couldn't tell you. I feel like that sounds right, but I have not. Is it Sexton or Doss? One of those guys. I tried real hard and I just, I could not get into it for whatever reason. So I, I get it. Yeah. I totally understand. Not everyone's Joe Rogan, although we are 50% alike. We're both named Joe. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah. Do you tell Wrong. Aaron Rodgers to not worry about his COVID vaccine and it'll all be okay? I have no idea. <laughs> that, that would actually explain why, uh, you, know, you being a Bears fan, why he was out. Yeah, but it didn't help at all because he came back for that game. It didn't well, matter. You, you should have coughed on him sooner, Joe. Yeah, I know. Next time I'll just <laughs> make sure next time he's yawning, I'll sneeze into his mouth or something. <laughs> and we just lost oh, more gross. viewers because of that image right there. <laughs> oh, gross. Oh, yeah. You we're, know. About lose, we're about to lose a host. Oh, we're, we're about to lose all the listeners we don't have anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh, well, hey, do we want to go around and join like what episode we're four drinking? or five? And be like, wow, I like their stuff. I'll start from the beginning, and they're like, I should not have started. From the I, sh- I should have not have started. <laughs> that was yeah, that was a poor life choice. And speaking of starting, do we want to get started and tell people what all we're drinking? Sure. I never. Well, I probably should before my glass is empty here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to take a break for a refill. Five minutes into this thing. Oh, geez. Well, I will start. I am the Wisconsin born and bred guy here and uh, sipping on a whiskey sweet old fashioned with some homemade old fashioned mix with extra bitters. Ooh, That is uh, my go to drink of choice when I feel like being fancy and more than just cracking open a beer. Yeah, We usually go to the old fashioned. Yeah. Seems a little old fashioned. A little bit. (laughs) <laughs> what do you got, RJ? Me, I am drinking a Rosso from the Coppola Winery. Okay. Uh, real dry. Red red there. 
I say it seems yep, to it, have read dry, sweet, semi-sweet. Oh, very dry, very Ooh, dry, very I, good. I think I, I think I offered to let my wife drink it, and she took one smell of it and said, "No, thank you." So, I, you know, what's going to be good when you take a sniff, and that runny nose just disappears, just dries yep. everything <laughs> up, even on the smell. You know, that's also uh, called work when half my athletes come in to get the biofreeze. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I, the the first time I ever (laughs) had a port wine, which I had no idea it was sweet at the time I was at a beer and wine tasting show. It was like 30 bucks for a ticket, but as much as you wanted. And so it was pretty sweet. It was a sweet deal. That that was up in Wisconsin. Where else who, where else would host (laughs) something like that? Uh, and I was, I was walking by and they're like, Oh yeah, wine, try it. And I saw port and I love porters, dark beer. (laughs) <laughs> and I thought the same thing. I took one sip of that. And the lady's like, you OK? I was like, I did not know this was going to be sweet. Uh, it was like drinking Welch's grape right juice. There. And I was expecting a dark, heavy beer. Yeah. When you're the Catholic church wine, that's all you've ever had. And OK, let's try a wine. And that's not what I was expecting. And it's not that I'm not I'm used old. to drinking wine. I just, you know, my parents, my my mom likes semi dry. My dad likes semi dry. Oh. Or semi-sweet, like nothing too bad, nothing real extreme yeah. on either end. And that That's was my experience with wine. What is the difference between a semi-dry and a semi-sweet? You if I knew that... the same thing, but they're very much not the same thing. Partly sunny and partly cloudy. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, so, man. and right now I'm not drinking anything because as soon as we're done recording this, I'm driving over to my in-laws for Sunday night dinner. So... Where you will need to drink a lot, I assume. Well, you know, they are all. So I, I moved to Indiana and end up in hanging out and getting married to the only all Packers family in the area. Which is how <laughs> they should be born and raised. I just uh, like I move here. Well, no, Indiana, they're not Lions fans. Colts fans. No Lions, no Colts, nothing. So it's it. Yeah. Yeah. So. I don't know. As you can tell from this podcast, uh, <laughs> we're just going to talk about nothing, basically. Yeah, we we're might talking about disc like golf. Talk about something important in between, but oh really, yeah, at this time of know, year. You know. I, well, I shouldn't say that. Uh, this time of year, there yeah, have been a lot news. of changes. <laughs> I mean, I feel like for disc golf, I know we've been following it what softly for the last five, six years. Yeah, it one seems like it's year. one of the more exciting off seasons. Yeah, I uh, mean, I I really have enjoyed this off season. Um, you know, I I haven't really checked the pro tour at all before really getting into Joe's podcast um, over the last year. So you know, I don't think I could have told you more than about two or three pros before this year. But I'll be honest, I'm I'm excited for this year. There there have been some moves that have really excited me. I mean, to be um, fair, one or two of those pros is uh, one of the moves being made. Yeah, well, that that I, is true. Honest, is honestly, true. Uh, before I started the podcast uh, about this time last year, uh, Joe's Disc Golf Podcast, you can find that on Apple, Spotify, everywhere. <laughs> Shameless yeah, plug. Pretty, you bell, give it five, fun, uh, you know, five stars? To say to like, uh, I could not tell you any of the pros that weren't Paul McBeth, Ricky Wysocki, and Paige Pierce, unless I happen, yeah. happen to, not specifically bought, happen to buy a pro disc like i had a uh, nate doss uh what was that was that a nuke no it wasn't a nuke i don't know i had a nate doss you know whatever so i was like oh nate doss he's pretty good or a, you know i had a climo whatever and his name's on a bunch of different things <laughs> kind of deal yeah, i mean outside of that thing for me and or emac e- emac truth <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. It actually took me a little while to realize there was. Yeah, it took me a while to realize that there was a name to. It wasn't just they named it Emac Truth. It was actually named after a guy. So, so, so just to give you guys an idea of how engaging we are, um, my wife just just from listening to me just came (laughs) over and grabbed her bottle of Captain. you, so she's got her own bottle. The, <laughs> she's, yeah, she's yeah. joining the party. She's joining she's the party. To drink away your sound. Yeah. Uh, apparently. Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, this year has been uh, listening to some of the other podcasts that I listen to. This is one of the more exciting. One of the most exciting is what everybody's been saying. Yeah. Off seasons. Obviously, I, last year. Was it last year? 
Yeah, uh, the Paul Macbeth, ten million, yep. ten years. Yep. Uh, that was that was pretty exciting. Uh, but that was yep. just one. I mean, it was huge. Don't get me wrong. By far, the most annual contract that of yeah. guaranteed money. It it really seems year. like it started the whole. This is really a pro sport. Yep. Movement. You can make money. I mean, yeah, we had big signings. You had guys like Paul Macbeth and Ricky Wysocki and Ken Climo and, you know, on and on that have their own disc brand about them. Yeah. But Sexton now, has, their, has hear... that money printing machine that's sitting right behind you, that Firebird. <laughs> Love that thing. Um, <sighs> I have never thrown a more overstable, overstable disc than that flat top. Overstable? Firebird, but that was also prior to the tilt coming out so i haven't <laughs> thrown that yet but i have an odd feeling that may be a different discussion nowadays. if you ever make your way back down to fort wayne i'll let you borrow the tilt or the or when we make our way up to again. um yeah to wisconsin yeah yeah but um, you know going back to what i was saying all of a sudden the word million gets thrown around and your point of view starts to change i mean all of a sudden it's you know you're talking football players you're talking baseball hockey basketball you know, those contracts are like, okay, you're talking in the millions. All of a sudden now disc golf, you're using the word million thrown around and yeah, it yeah. makes it yeah, start million to feel like we're year. really starting to grow. And Macbeth being the first one to desert, you know, kind of see that contract makes sense. Yeah. I I yeah. played disc golf back in the Ken Climo days, but I definitely did not follow disc golf no. back in those days. No. Macbeth was the first guy that you really, at least in my sake, followed. You yeah, know, I, I joined the world when Macbeth had already had a couple world titles and Waisaki was kind of making a push. That's when I kind of really started following the pro tour. I'm pretty so sure to see Macbeth be that first one and now Waisaki make the second one. To me, it's like I can see the direction that we're making the move, yeah. which I think is awesome. I'm, I'm pretty yeah, sure. And... When did when did Macbeth ahead, turn Jeff. pro? As far as year been last age. year, as far as I know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know age wise, he was one of the younger ones. I want to say he joined the tour like 16, 17, 18, 19. He, he's like, been a he member since teams. 2005. But let's see. Like I said, he's one of the names that I would have been able to tell you last year, or at least been in the ballpark of telling you last year. So he yeah. has to have been there for, you know, at, at least probably. Five, okay. ten years minimum. He did so. a national tour in 2010. Let's go back to 2009. He did I mean, a 20, bunch of national was, tour stops. 2009. Uh, 2000. He did an NT. He did the memorial a lot. That I was in 2008. Where's, where's the memorial held again? I just blanked. Because is yeah. Macbeth the California guy born and raised, I believe, right? And then he moved East Coast. Let's see the memorial. I or I may that be sounds way off familiar, that. but you know, if only Scottsdale, we all had... Arizona. Okay, that's wow. Uh, two thousand seven, he played one NT, the Golden State Classic. He placed thirty fourth. He's. He's only 5'8". Yeah. So it looks like 2007, 2008. Oh, he, he turned oh, pro that, he was that touring. Yeah. Or at least playing some bigger tournaments. Yeah, he won. Yeah. It looks like he played advanced and then made the jump in 2007 because he's got some advanced and some... So oh, yeah, according he played, to Innova... He got second at to Innova, uh, Worlds. You According amateur. to Innova, he turned pro in 2008. Eight, okay. So, so that, like, that is according to Wikipedia page, which is citing Innova. So a lot of guys um, turn pro yeah, after it, Am Worlds. So that doesn't surprise me. Yeah, and that that makes a lot of sense. I mean, I've I remember playing uh, Joe. You and I played in that tournament years a couple years ago. The um, uh, what was it? It was trilogy based. There was the car on the disc. Orange? Oh. Uh, next gen. Yeah, the next that's, gen. That's turned into a year. big deal. I I remember um when there was the Am Tour that year, the Am World Champs. There was a kid that hit an ace. Yep. And everybody was all excited. He absolutely crushed me in that tournament. I was on the same yes. card as him and just got walloped. I mean, I thought I was throwing a pretty good round. 
Yeah. I think we were playing at Shelf Park in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Yeah. Um, and we're, we we knew that open one. course. I'd say open course. If you are a oh, guy that very can much throw the disc course. a long ways, you're going to do well at that course. Especially that was before we had the the letter holes in, and those are the those are yeah, the ones, those are the ones that actually make you throw a little bit. Like, there's a couple of holes that involve some touch, but for the most part, it's pretty open park. And yeah, I was throwing a pretty decent round. I was, you know, eight, nine, ten under, I think, by the end of it. I was pretty happy with my score. This kid just he just crushed, crushed me. It. Like all of a sudden I'm throwing like, oh, that's a good shot. And he's parked five feet from the basket. Yep. I mean, you know, oh, I was pretty happy. I hit the line I really wanted to hit. The wind didn't play with it too much. And he's chaining out, almost hitting an ace. Yep. So all of a sudden we saw the video a couple weeks ago or a couple weeks later. And it's like, oh, cool. He hit an ace. Oh, I remember that kid. He crushed me. Yes. He made me feel bad about life. <laughs> Did it make you feel you know, a little bit better? About I mean, and I shouldn't even say kids. He wasn't really that young. I want to say he was probably 17, 18 at the time. Yeah. I mean, talking compared about, to me, he was young at the time. Talking about getting your ass handed but, to you on a platter by a kid. I played at the annual bag tag challenge in Fort Wayne. So anyone who has a bag tag at the end of the year was it, on was it New Hiram Year's or Eve, was it? Um, it was Hiram on New Year's. Okay. You know, everybody who has a, a couple, tag a couple weeks ago here, or is, a couple days ago, even. Yeah. Everyone uh, who has a tag, you throw it in now. and everybody just goes out and you play around. And at the end of it, you know, they sort it by best. And if mm -hmm. there's any ties, higher tag gets the higher number. <clears throat> I was playing on a card with Hiram. And I started out all right, <laughs> but then I just realized that I had played probably three rounds in three months because kids are awesome. I love having kids, but that also means I don't get to play a lot of disc golf. And a, a, if, if you can get Lily that Kona deal, it'll be yeah. worth it. Yeah, I think I might have to wait a little <laughs> while considering she's only just about four months old. Yeah. And um, yeah, so... I had one guy come up to me. He's like, oh, did you see that? Uh, you know, Hiram beat everybody on his card by at least seven strokes. And I looked at him. I was like, I was on Hiram's card. <laughs> and he's like, I'm sorry. I was like, oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. I sucked. I totally like that was bad. That was. Yeah, we. But I've really? also seen you on that course throw some hot rounds. Oh, I, I went out and played one practice round. <laughs> I went out, of course, by myself, because when else do I throw hot rounds mm -hmm. by myself? 15 down on a 19 hole one. like i just i crushed it absolutely just like but here's the thing though like on that course like if i'm on i'm on this was okay i missed my line by a little bit but then that tree kick rolled it to the basket oh yeah. no i'm in the woods how did i get through that there's no line there how did i get through yeah. oh that's gonna go long oh i hit the work. tree it knocked it right down to the basket i'm like yeah is this it, tillman? tillman yeah Tillman's yeah. a great course. They they hold yeah, the Three Rivers open there now. I mean, we're talking the three of us, but for anybody looking, Tillman Park in Fort Wayne, Indiana, got installed five years ago. Give or take. You and I helped at put in some we, of those at holes. At least we started it. I mean, I think it's been an 18-hole course since we started it, but now it's 19 holes. Yep. And it is developing to be an awesome, awesome course. I think they're trying to um, position Tillman and then the new seminary course, which you haven't played yet. No, um, I, I think they're trying to position that to be able to hold potentially a silver series. I think the way that they were uh, talking a tier down the road, uh, it's already an a tier. Oh, it's already an a tier. The hard okay. part is yeah. like last year it happened at the same time. It was in September. The pro side was in September and right. I forget where they are They're there. The tour is all the way out on the East coast. So that might've been like green mountain or Delaware or something. They weren't any, like there was no way we were getting, a pro but what we could end up doing is if it gets Touring. well known enough <laughs> i think what the because the disc golf pro tour has taken over the whole national tour everything except the majors yeah. uh, i think what they're going to try to do is probably get it so it's like silver series is your way to earn points to get a tour card to try to get on the full pro tour okay because that's okay. one thing they're doing this year is they've added tour cards um Kind of to like top. Sense. I mean, that's top seventy-five. That's um, is. Yeah, it's the twenty twenty-one top the seventy-five ball. points earners get a card automatically. You can apply if you didn't get it, um, and then the top twenty-five FPO players. Okay. And there's only one person that I heard doesn't qualify to get it, and that was Macy Valadias from Dynamic Discs, but she only played a handful of tournaments and got married in the summer. 
So, yeah, and she that. only just missed it. She was like in the 30s, I think, points wise. So I'm okay. sure like she'll end up applying and getting a waiver, however that all works. But what yeah. I think is going to, they're going to move to is like the silver, silver series is like kind of like that, I don't know, like triple A ball for baseball. I'll say your your NBA G League kind of Yeah, thing. your G League, your mm-hmm. Canadian Football League, your where you're pretty good and everybody's pretty good, mm-hmm. but you're not quite there yet, but it's a way to get in. I have a feeling they're going to do that with like courses too. Okay. And be able to rotate now, it because nobody's going to care as much about a silver series or maybe not courses as much as particular tournaments. Yeah. Rotate yes. tournaments like, you know, maybe the three rivers open gets a chance to with the seminary course, hold a, a silver series stop. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Now I will say for our listeners that are not as advanced of disc golfers like myself, Hellman can be a little bit of a nightmare. I've only played it once. Um, and you played it other from the whites. Fort Wayne. Yes, I played it from the whites. Um, I made you play it from the whites. Yeah, I actually really enjoyed it, but on my own or and and we played it either late in the fall or early in the spring. Yeah, even we found that like 40 degree winter day or something. There weren't a lot of leaves on the trees. Right, right. Not a lot of foliage For, for those of you that are beginners and don't like losing a lot of discs like me. Not necessarily your go-to course. There are no. better courses in Fort Wayne for for my skill level. Um, like I said, I've only played Tillman once. I enjoyed it, but it, it's certainly something where um, it it can be intimidating. And if you're not quite up to, you want to have spotters. Uh, <laughs> yes, you want to have yeah. spotters. If you're someone that isn't always going to consistently hit your lines, or it the, really doesn't like losing discs, like myself. Not that anyone likes losing no. discs. But, no. Um, you know, I, I would not necessarily recommend jumping into that one. There are some other courses like Shof that we mentioned before, although that one's so long that it 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 is not my favorite. Um, I'm sure that we'll it is this little, well, the most beginner let's, let's, friendly in Fort Wayne where there's no chance of water. Well, I will say that Sweeney is too. What was that? Yeah. Oh, sweet. So that, brings, that brings a good point that I want to talk about. One. Let's talk about ourselves and as far as our disc golf game. Ah, yes. Because yes. for people listening, we are not your tour series pros <laughs> by any means of the event. Hey, hey, I'm still a free agent to be sponsored, though. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm still. Yeah. I'd like to actually, I would like round. to, I'd like to announce my uh, recent uh, partnership with T-Mobile. Uh, I agreed <laughs> to pay them about $77 a month after taxes <laughs> for my cell phone bill. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm right there with you. I've, I've got that sponsorship deal too. Yeah. They, uh, sponsor my phone and I pay them money. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sounds, sounds about right. That's At about that as point, close I, as I'm I'm getting. Spo- hey, if we're going with that, I am sponsored by pretty much every disc golf manufacturer out there right now. I mean, look at what I got behind Honest. me. I even, <laughs> I even got quest AT. They're not even in business right now. <laughs> Oh, but uh, of I, I guess I'll, I'll really start a little bit. Um, I, I live up in the <laughs> Green Bay, Wisconsin area, um, but I definitely live down with these guys in Fort Wayne, Indiana. So when we talk about some local Fort Wayne courses, I can definitely kind of hold my own and saying how bad I suck at playing them. But I, I would consider myself an M2 to M1 level of player. Um, my My biggest thing in my game is... I throw everything pretty decent. I am far more a backhand dominant player than anything. Um, like with every non pro, my putting is unbelievably awful. Um, and that's probably my biggest step back from going up a level. Um, but when we talk about levels of play, I, I consider myself, <laughs> at least in my own eyes, to be a halfway decent disc golfer. Um, I've been playing probably honestly since about five, six years old. Uh, Dad introduced me to the game. He heard about it from a friend of a friend kind of thing. We went out, played a local course. Um, the uh, lovely little AVR completely not warped, barely can sit in the wall because it's been so beat up and warped. Uh, it was the <laughs> first disc I ever threw, so I figured I had to throw that up in the uh, in the background here for the video. But that's that's me. Um, you know, we'll talk about a little bit more for you guys. RJ, you want to go? 
Yeah, so I've been playing now for probably about five-ish years. Um, really only been playing consistently since uh, probably over the last year and a half or so, so since 2020. Um, I got my first discs in probably 2018, 2019. Um, I guess technically, if you want to you know, really get into it, I threw a, a, a campground course back when I was in middle school with just like your run of the mill, you know, Frisbee, uh, back before I really understood that disc golf was, yeah. you know, yeah, really a thing. Um, you know, and I probably put up in the tens on a par three. Um, but yeah, now you're so down I, to the nines. <laughs> maybe even draw a snowman on a good day you know well i mean there are certainly some some holes where where i would not be uh unhappy with a, a double bogey um yeah so i'm i am very firmly in am3 um i want to say I, I i joke about you know my 800 grade round i do think that is right around my best um round that was on a course that very much suited me um for for those of you that see this today, I think Brody Smith put out a tweet about, you know, what's keeping you from a thousand rated round? And I put in the group chat. I, I'm pretty sure the biggest thing is my driving distance, uh, followed by my mid range consistency and my putting accuracy. Uh, so basically, if I was a lot better disc golfer, I'd be a better disc golfer. Um, pretty which, much. Yeah. 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 Um, so for me, you know, like I said, I've really been working on it for a couple of years now, a year and a half, two years, getting into my second year where I'll be playing in tournaments. Um, hopefully we'll, we'll see what COVID and still waiting to finally go on my honeymoon. Um, my wife and I got married in 2020. So those of you that got married that year know the pain of trying to find a honeymoon. Um, <laughs> and then also some... <laughs> you know, some other professional responsibilities and, and personal responsibilities. So um, I mainly throw a uh, trilogy plastic just because that's what, you know, the, the two got my two co-hosts are the ones that really got me into disc golf. And that's what they were throwing at the time. Uh, my first disc was a, actually my first two discs that I bought for myself were probably a, um, lucid air escape which i am still looking for if any of our listeners have uh <laughs> newer escapes um oh by the way i'm switching to bush light now um because i, I ran I out of line. needing a refill here probably <laughs> in a second when joe's talking i may sneak yeah. out very quietly i, I, I might have uh texted my my wife jamie and uh asked her if she could grab me a drink and she's amazing yeah. she's uh uh to borrow a reference she's kevin durant's mom she's a real mvp <laughs> yeah make side note bring more than one drink to podcast for next time yeah yes <laughs> yes <laughs> um so yeah my, my first two discs were a lucid air escape and a um and a uh classic soft judge those were my first two discs that i bought on my own uh and and i think before that uh really the the discs that i had were ones that i got from these two and have mostly since lost uh so ben if you ever get a message saying hey i found your disc and you don't remember owning this disc it was probably me yeah uh, there's, there's definitely been a couple from joe that also i get a call from yep. fort wade number like yeah i haven't lived down there in like five six years uh that's probably <laughs> joe that threw it give him a call yeah <laughs> yes. how many times yeah. has that gladiator been found in the woods at sweeney yeah i don't uh, think it's coming back in, anymore and the woods are in the uh Creek pond. Yes. Well, see, I am notorious, <laughs> and Joe can vouch for this. If the disc I am throwing has some sort of water based anything, <laughs> yep, the Anova Shark, the Latitude Gladiator, that was a ship at the time. Um, I'm pretty so sure I lost your I remember you lost the boatman. The boatman, if it had anything to do with water at all whatsoever, that thing has found the water for yep. me, just like its <laughs> name is supposed to be. It has it, been it was to its name, huh? Oh yeah. Yeah. So I have now learned that all of those just come out of my bag. And if it has anything to do with a dry <laughs> desert, that's what I'm throwing. Yeah, <laughs> there's one that's out there that's called the cactus, but you give me time. That's we'll find it. Disc. So yeah. All right. I'm oh, gonna man. tap out, go get myself a Kay. drink. So Joe, so you introduce yourself here in the I've, meantime. I've yeah. probably played yeah. the most tournaments out of everybody here. Um 
I really got, I've been playing since uh, my college roommate got me into it in like 2010-ish. Is this Ian? Yeah. He got me, okay. he got me into this. Um, and I think the first disc I had was a uh, boss. Uh, I used to putt with darts and I had uh, I've never thrown a boss. I always hear good things about well, it. I've never thrown. A- it depends on which one, because uh, <laughs> Innova is notorious. yes, notoriously all over. the Yes, yeah, you can. I like the my biggest complaint with them and which some people love it is that I could buy six different bosses and they will all fly different. And not just like a little bit wildly different. So, so, so my beast that I got from Ben, I should not try and well, go that, buy a new it's one. It's probably beat into, you know, like the one behind <laughs> yeah, me. I, you could see right over my head here. It is well loved, well used. I threw that thing a ton. I've, but, I've got a uh, Railer Truth that probably once I finally get uh, my discs up on a wall, which yeah. I'll probably start on because I going back to kind of where we started with podcasts and you know, Ricky Waisaki. I'm not someone that has ever been like, oh, this person throws this plastic, so I'm going to throw it. But I'll be honest, between Ricky and Kona signing for DD, which is, as I said, my favorite brand, um, or my at least favored brand. I yeah. haven't really thrown enough to, to necessarily have a favorite, but you know, I went out and... Yeah, I'm sponsored by DD because I gave that or uh, signed a contract to give them about a hundred dollars for four discs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, I went out and, and got a couple of those signed discs, and so I'm hoping that at some point I'll be able to get a little like you guys. Um, but I've got a truth that's beat to hell like that too. Yeah. Uh, but well, I so I've played like I was saying I was played my first rated round was back. I I signed up. I think I was with you, RJ. We randomly walking around uh walking yeah. past sweeney and uh-huh. we're like oh hey, i remember this doubles let's play you know bring your own partner doubles and i was like all right I, cool and i had to borrow your discs yeah because i didn't have any yeah so we played <laughs> and i think we took one of your shots and they probably took one of my putts <laughs> yeah hey, i bet you rj had at least three of those tap in putts that and you guys and then yes on top <laughs> yeah. and then from there I was like, oh, hey, they're like, oh, yeah, if you want to sign up, Three Rivers Open's happening tomorrow if you want to play. I was like, sure, why not? You can't do that now. But, like, that no. was my first rating, no. and, you know, it wasn't bad. I, I did all right. Was, was um, it above a 500? I don't know what it was, because I actually wasn't a member at that time. But, like, 2020, I really got into it, started doing stuff, and just looking at my ratings, it, I, like, I play M1 right now. And I'd say I'm middle of the pack M1, especially out here in Fort Wayne. We've got a pretty solid M1. But to give you an idea of how all over the board, how inconsistent I can be. Uh, October 18th, the France Park Open, round one, I shot an 805. At the time, I was rated like 906. So that didn't even count towards my rating. It was so bad. And uh, the week before that, I guess it was two weeks before that. I shot uh, a 949 rated round. My best round ever is a 969. So if I could ever get my putting consistent, my drives, generally speaking, are pretty good. Like I am, I have finally in 2020 developed a backhand. Unlike everybody else that you hear of developing a forehand, (laughs) I have finally developed a backhand because my... You are also the guy that came from more of an ultimate Frisbee type of background. I came from ultimate Frisbee and baseball. Um, I never played baseball in high school, but like I played baseball from the time I could walk up until high school. And then I played summer league stuff with friends and like, so I played a lot of baseball. So my forehand, like my PRs are all forehand. (laughs) By like 30, 40 feet at this point. Huh? Do you, do you know your PR off of uh, offhand? I can look at it off of UDisc. I wish mm. I would have measured mine. Because um, like that was that course I was talking about, about the uh, the one in Manitowoc. There's a pro tournament yeah. held there. I want to say it's Silver Silver Creek Park or something like that. Uh, that I sounds familiar. On a par five. 
I, I hit the two on a par See, five, and I absolutely. I just want to hit a six it. on a par five most of the time. No, it was I. I couldn't. Hey, even tell RJ, what you want to play that? I was playing a subpar round. I, I was hitting new course. Had never played it before. There was a hole at the top of the hill. Had this was par five. The pin was in the long position. So I'm like, what's there to lose? Just took it, ripped on it, and just you know that picture of it, just an S curve where it just, just flows beautiful, and it just does life. exactly what you yeah. want it to do. That, where at the very end, it just kind of fades shot. out and carries that little bit. I'm like, there's no way I threw that, did I? And also, we were walking out like that felt like a good drive. Also, we're walking like, wow, I, I crush this. Also, you know, my wife picks up her drive and, and nothing on Kale. She throws a good disc. Yeah, she for, does for a female a very good disc base player. She throws the disc very far. She can't putt to save her life, which is why she hasn't played in tournaments. Well, that's because but, her putting range is 75 to 150 feet. Yeah, I was going to say, you give her, you give her that <laughs> mid-range upshot, that she's got down pat, but that 10-foot putt, that's a whole different story. Yeah. Um, I've seen Kayla play, and that is actually accurate. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are not so. exaggerating. No. No, you give her a 70-yard putt, she's far more comfortable with that than she is from 15 you know, hundred uh, percent. But so, so we picked up hers, picked up another buddies, and I'm still a good hundred hundred feet in front of them. I, I bet you I was probably close to five hundred on that one, which for solid. me is crazy. So for internet distance, for all of everybody watching, I can throw the disc five hundred feet. Yeah, but realistically, I live around four hundred. <laughs> I can blame hey, disc golf alley. I can crush a six hundred foot drive on. That would hey. take me about three or four shots to get that in uh, in real life. Hey, we but. can try that out, RJ. The seminary course has an 1,100 foot par five where it's 800 feet to the corner where there's a mando and you have to go then 300 feet. Didn't we play that one? We in, did. Uh, your brother-in-law threw to the wrong pin. Yes. <laughs> because all of a sudden in like the middle of his his wind up, I'm like, that that's the hole over there, right? And you're like, no, it's over. And he's just like, uh, 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 uh. yep. <laughs> for, for those people that couldn't see me, I just did my best uh, impression of somebody trying to, to pull back a disc after it's five feet out of their hands. Yep. So I just uh, got my but I've ever thrown in circle one. I got my PRs here. <laughs> I guess I'll ask you guys. Well, so I could definitely say on the forehand one, I probably could have got an extra 10 feet, but like it slid up to the fence. Because I was throwing on a football field. Uh, I remember you telling me okay. this. Uh, so yeah. what do you guys think my backhand PR is on like Your perfect backhand. ideal condition? Uh, 420. No, not to be mean, yeah. but no, I'd say watching you, your backhand, I'd say you could maybe hit 360. 449, according to you, disc. Everything That's was perfect. Rules. It was, it was one <laughs> of those, it was your 500, lies. it was your 500 foot drive. Like everything was perfect. Yeah. I've never seen you turn it was on my, that. That is awesome. It was with my like trespass. 80 or 490. Okay. I think uh, the trespass is what I threw mine on. Also. It was, it was yeah. one of those where it was just like trespass is nice. I, I have hit, an air trespass because I don't have the arm speed for it, but the air trespass nice. for yeah. you makes a lot of sense. I hit, it is, yeah, I hit everything. Like trespass right, in itself is pretty stable. I mean, yeah, yeah. For the, for your pros that can oh. absolutely rip on it, it's going to be too understandable. But for your average person, it's fairly and this stable. Is, this is my trespass so, I've had for a while. It's a little, little beat so it's a little ahead, more Jeremy. understable and this one was just one of those like i hit the timing right you heard the snap it was one of those like if i could do this consistently i would not be middle bottom yep. of m1 i'd consider playing for money rather than discs yes yeah yeah so so i bought the trespass because my wife got like a five disc starter set okay. um and the trespass came in that and i'm like okay. well, the trespass is gonna be way too Big, like from even from my arm speed, mm -hmm. let alone hers. But I threw it on a couple holes because I'm like, okay, I want the really s just stupid overstable finish. I don't have anything in my bag that necessarily does that. I threw it a couple times. I'm like, oh, well, this is nice. And then we were playing, uh, what Joe was it Trilogy Challenge or no, it wouldn't have been Trilogy Challenge, no, it was, was something no. at PFW. Um, there's. The, I, I don't remember what it was. Two there. challenges potentially. No, it wasn't even that. It oh, was, was it that the it the dynamic disc? Um, the dynamic disc van came to town. Yeah, those are the two disc challenges. But they didn't. Um, they didn't have because we were still in the middle of the disc 
shortage, like the plastic shortage, it was oh, okay. pay yeah, your like entry fee, you get a disc or two discs. Pay your entry fee, get a disc, and... And that's it. Yeah, like, you so can I, use whatever you wanted. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't remember if I technically got the Air Trespass with that or the Jade, but I got it at the same time. Um, which, for for those of you that don't know, I love throwing light, light plastic. Um, mm-hmm. I'm yep. actually hoping to write an article about that. Um, like I said, my favorite disc, my... You know, if I had a signature disc, it would be the, the Lucid Air Escape. Yeah. Um, which You've been throwing that well. Basically, yeah. yeah, which is basically just a reskinning of the Jade. Um, <laughs> yeah, which, either are good to find, like, because they're both yeah. rather difficult to find. So it's nice that yeah. if you can find one. I, I wish yeah. I was still down by you guys, RJ. I have a, uh, a Jade that I had as a misprint, because I remember way back when I got introduced. Like with the models. elephant stamp and everything? Yep, it was the. Uh, oh, I would so the, pay you money when the for RVs that. came by, oh, cow. right? The you know yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. the team RVs, and it was uh, the, right. the dynamic disc RV that came with all the trilogy plastic. I remember my very first tournament. I can't. I think. I know I had the uh, my soft Emac Judge. That's old blue. He's still in my bag. Mm-hmm. Black it, like plastic, plastic blue stuff? stamp. That thing. I I don't care if that I'm throwing nice. it. Ten I remember feet, that one. Ten feet or three hundred feet. That thing is a straight line all day. Yes. It is beat in just perfect. It is warped. It is bubbled. If you look at it, it is an awful disc. But God, I, I my class throw that thing judge is show. about like that. And oh, you oh my God. This thing's bad, got a definite. I, I wish I, yeah. if it weren't on camera right now, I'll have to bring it next time. It has just got some awful <laughs> warps and dips. That's, it is, that's my white Joe judge. has seen me go swimming after that a oh, few yeah. times that I've gone on the cricket. <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember there was a time we were uh, we were golfing Sweeney on that backside. What is it? 15, 16, where there's a crick on the backside. Oh, yeah. right it's across ice the over. I have gone through the ice because it found its way into the crick, and I've gone swimming in the frigid yep. weather. Yep. That old blue is in my bag forever. That was one of the first discs I bought. And then I think I bought, you know, I can't even tell you what my other disc was. It had to be a higher speed. The hardest part um, for me that, was taking out challenge, that, that white judge that I had. Because yeah, I had, had that one. so uh, for so long. I, and it hit I know. so many trees. It looked yeah. like a freaking mountain range on there. I'm like, I can't like I'm trying to putt with this thing. and I have no idea where it's going. And it's not it's not necessarily because of my ability. Like, I don't it's know where this is going to go. Yeah. I mean, that but probably that doesn't help. First, but like it was it was bad. That was my first introduction to the trilogy plastics. I'm like, oh, my God, I threw it. And I, I won that tournament. It was a two disc tournament and I won it. And yep. I'm like, I've never thrown this plastic before. I had been strictly in of our discraft because in Green Bay, that's really all they had at the time. And to be fair, you up know, until relatively recently, that's about that's, all you could get. Yeah, I mean, those yeah. were the big companies at the time, so I've never thrown it. So I'm like, okay, cool. Well, I want to start throwing Trilogy Plastic. So my dumb ass goes out and buys a box like 20 misprint discs. You don't know what any of them are. You don't know what any of them do, but it's misprint bundle. Okay, cool. I have a Jade in there that I had tried to throw. I don't know why I tried to throw it for you. At, for me, it's definitely too understable. My arm yeah. speed, I, and that was before I learned how to actually throw a disc. That yeah. was like, okay, I'm going to take it from back to front as fast as I can. Yep. And uh, that thing is beat in. For you, that would probably crush. I got to find it. It's in the That's... basement in a box somewhere. Next time <laughs> I come visit, I'll make sure I find it. Yeah. But it's, I... it's funny. Like That's why I love the misprint discs. And every company oh, and has those now. They're great. Oh my gosh. Everybody calls them something different. I think Innova calls them X out and. Yep. Yep. Whatever it is. If you are not sure what you want to throw, go buy a mystery box of a bunch of crap. Go to your plate or even better yet, go to your plate again, sports or whatever secondhand sport you have and just buy a box of a bunch of crap. I bought, uh, I just just got a misprint felon just because I wanted another, not a backup. I Mm -hmm. need to replace the one that I have in my bag has been in there for about four or five years. I played a lot of wooded courses this summer and last summer, and it it's it's not acting like a felon anymore. It's kind of like that criminal I used to have. That thing was straight, and yeah, criminals no sense, are not straight. That's, criminals. That's not how a criminal or a felon is supposed a to. A criminal fly. is <laughs> it's discontinued now, but it was basically a ten speed instead of a nine speed. Yeah, it's, it, a, it's, it's a, a ten speed felon basically, yeah. right? Yeah, it, so, ish, ish. It it floats and it wants to carry a little bit more. A little that's bit more, big, but for the most the part, switches I'm making out is I I have a couple felt or criminals in my bag that I love, 
It's but just they're so close. They, it is just they carry a little bit too much, and I think yeah. I want you know when you're throwing that fairway, at least on my sake, when I throw a fairway, I want it to die a little bit sooner. Yeah. If I want to go further, I'm going to speed up to my distance. Now for you, RJ, that's mm-hmm. slightly slower. You know, the distance drivers mm-hmm. for you are almost the exact opposite. They're so fast, they're so wide that they're going to get to the ground quicker. So, mm-hmm. in my sake, I need something a little bit slower. So that's where one of the changes that I'm making is. But yeah, uh, yeah. but yeah, it's funny when yeah, you want I to mean, start out on a new disc or you want to try and learn a new plastic, just go buy a bunch of misprints. And honestly, some of my favorite discs in my bag are the misprint. You get that stamp yeah. that's just ever so slick. Awesome. It almost gauntlet? looks like a shadow and just looks super. Oh, cool. you had one that was slick. That the misprint, do. it looked like it was three. It looked like it was intentional. Yeah, it was a it was a triple misprint, and every one was maybe just a centimeter off, and it's just got a beautiful, beautiful shadow. Cool. And well, my misprint uh, fell using, in. It's my roller. They're disc. ninety. <laughs> it's not. Yeah. Well, I have a couple yeah. of really ugly ones too, or the ones that just have like big X out and completely cover the stamp or whatever. You know, I have some of yeah. those. And I do want to say about that yeah. one is I I ordered, I ordered that at the same time I ordered my uh, Kona Vandals. And they had they were doing their thing where they're like, you could ask her to sign it. I was like, oh, hey, could you sign my discs? Thinking only of the vandals. Well, she signed both of my vandals and my felon. <laughs> Which I'm super happy about. Like, that's awesome. I mean, yeah. I'll put it, she'll probably throw a felon. I don't think she's going to be throwing it for max distance. No, I means. think that's, if, but, if oh, that ends up in her bag, like, I'm it's going it to be super overstable yeah. disc. It's going to be more of a utility ish yeah. yeah it's not going to be like yeah. eric oakley throwing the felons or i could see ricky probably gravitating towards felon yeah, i think he did when he was with latitude the first time through so well it was, and that that's one of his team series ones too is the yeah felon. yeah that's not and what I, I got i i'm w- still waiting on mine i so got the ricky is Moonshine coming out harp and yeah oh nice so yeah, yeah should we I'm, actually go into like what we had set for you know yeah. topics we wanted to actually cover oh, yeah. today that we might as well. Yeah. This was only a uh, forty-seven minute, How forty-seven far minute this conversation uh, <laughs> intro. <laughs> intro. Uh, so, but yeah. the one thing I will say when you're talking about understable and that jade, that reminded me of that trilogy challenge where we all got the patrol. And oh, oh, I love that. I I, I love threw that, that thing. I remember as a backhand, I leaned. <laughs> all the way over and i let that thing go at a 90 that's, degree angle and it still bad, turned over hand wasn't good either my backhand wasn't good yeah. but i still yeah. actually let that thing go vertical and it flipped over oh uh, yeah because yeah. what was and, the uh i think the maiden that was troll. that year that was the maiden yeah, was i loved the maiden musket. was fantastic i was dark musket here putting with the patrol and, and you had the with the maiden you had the that was the musket too that was the year with the that, musket. That was yeah. one of my best throws I've ever had in disc golf. You played in Fort it. Wayne. Uh, we talked about Shove Park before. Open course. There's one hole that has never been aced at that park. Yeah. One, one hole. It's like uphill. Four. Four. Is it four? It's uphill. Yep. It's Three, blind. Yeah. It's There's a big four. guardian tree in the middle. Four, right? One, two. Wait. Yeah, it's four. One, two. Um, one, three. Big guardian tree in the middle. And yeah, you got you got huge trees right. to the left and right, and the disc the, the hole isn't terribly long, maybe three sixty. I think it's like a little it's shorter uphill. than that. It, it maybe even touch, but it's uphill, it so it plays longer. Uphill, yeah. And it's one of those. I mean, Joe and I have played this course oh hundreds. Like we're we're definitely in triple digits as far as how long we've played it. And yeah, uh, maybe not on U disc, but. No, but we've played it. We've played yeah, in the yeah. end of the. I mean, we also before. used to live right there. What's funny is the first couple holes don't call for a driver necessarily. So I didn't pull out the musket until then. And all of a sudden, I just hit this again. Perfect, beautiful, perfect condition S shot. All of a sudden, we hear a ting from the T pad. Like, there's no way this hole's never been aced before. And I actually hit the 320 uh, feet. 320? Yeah. Well, it plays like 380. Well, you're playing okay. uphill in the tree. Like, than you're than playing up tree. a significant hill the whole yeah. way, and it's a low ceiling the whole way. And the so, way the way so, the T-pad is set so up, you there's a hill right there, and you have to, like, yeah. basically cut the grass. If you throw too high, you're going to end up in the trees further down the fairway. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's... It's you're a gonna very end up tight out window. Into the trees or yep, and it's you either have to play an Anheuser or a Heiser. There is definitely not a line at it. There's a forehand. You have to kind of pick one. But uh, I, yeah, I, it was just one, one of those holes where all of a sudden I hit the basket. I'm like, wow, 
this disc is going. And I have one now. I still have that exact same disc in my bank. I don't know if I've pulled it out since, but I refuse to get rid of it in case I ever go back and play yeah. that specific hole. <laughs> it, <sighs> it is probably the highest speed disc, the, the musket that is. Yeah. That I still, yep. that I regularly use. And, yep. and um, just and as a side note for everybody out there listening, this isn't just a course where like local guys have come out and played like the local pros. We have a local pro whose claim to fame is getting second at Am Worlds or Am Nationals to Eula Barry. At Jason? No, uh, Forrest. Oh, okay. Really? Yeah. yeah. He took I, I would have guessed Jason. Yeah. Wow. It, to Yuli. Uh, and I think that was a I playoff, have heard too. of him. Um, <laughs> And they've had like the pros around here. This is also when disc golf was a lot smaller. Guys like Yuli have been and played Shof and um, Elijah Bickles, an up and comer. He just switched from disc mania to disc craft. He's like, he shredded. Uh, One of the other guys took him out, played Shof, and he's like, yeah, that was a good drive. And Elijah parked it. (laughs) You know, kind of like how (laughs) with with that am kid that we were talking about yeah. but like even yeah. better i i can't for the life of me i can't remember his name i wish i could i just remember being on the same card and all of a sudden i didn't know his name when i saw the you know when they're you know announcers are talking about the am world saying so i don't remember his yeah. name but as soon as they showed the camera i'm like oh my god that's guy. the kid that just crushed me like yeah. i remember this kid the one thing i do remember it took like 10 minutes to putt yes you know yeah which hey he new was, rule uh, this year once the area is clear in front of you 30 seconds. Is that the Nico rule? The Nico slash Gannon Burr rule. Yeah. Because, uh, who is it? Drew Gibson <laughs> called him on it this year. That terribly threw me off my game. Oh, yeah. Like when I, it, I'm so used to playing casual rounds. Yeah. You try to play the person in the back goes forward because you don't want anybody to get hit in the head with a disc. You know, you're taking your but time. But if you're, you're roughly going, in line with each other, nobody cares. And, yeah. I mean, we're not throwing at the same time, but like, okay, Joe releases disc. I'm taking my approach now. Yeah. You know, his just may not even have landed and I'm already starting my approach. Yeah. And now yeah. it's the rule is if the playing area in front of you nice <laughs> is clear. <laughs> and then if the like as long as it's safe essentially and you've had a reasonable amount of time to get to your disc and mark your lie kind of deal, like so it's not it's expecting someone to throw basically after they just crush a 500 foot drop. Once, once you address your lie, pretty much. Yeah. I, and mostly this happens for putting. I mean, I guess yeah. you can make an argument for up shots and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And unless you're going real nuts, I don't think anybody's really going to care all that much, but it's mostly the putting where it's like, okay, yeah. sorry, but you can't wait for the wind. Playing with one of my slower, like, Playing with that slower person really threw me off my game in a yeah. tournament because I, I, I understand to get your thirty seconds or minute or whatever it was, but it was one of those where it's like, all right, throw your putt. Like I'm not even reading the wind. Like I saw the line in my eyes, I saw yep. it in my head. I kind of visualized the putt, and I, and I think I'm the still three of us another minute, and I, I never called him out on it. And I wonder yeah. if that's maybe my mistake because I never called him out on it. But at the, the same the time, the hard part with the way the it rule wasn't a was pro tour thing. It was an am tour thing. Yeah. With the way the rule was, any distraction reset your timer. So you could just say something distracted you. Well, and, and there's a, a there's a road a and there's a golf course. Roads. There, yep. Yeah, there's a road and there's a golf course right there. So you could say that. I mean, you could say, you know, the guy sneezed that three holes away going by. and yeah. that distracted you. And, yep. you know, three holes away is hundreds of feet. So that's okay. that's one of the things. I just want to point something out that's totally off topic. My dog. Off topic. We great... haven't been on topic this whole yeah. time. <laughs> okay. So my dog has this has this pen that that she doesn't like going in. She's currently trying to get a tennis ball out of the, out of it. But not um, going through, in it. Through, through the yeah through yes. through the bars. It is hilarious to watch at. Or to watch. So if you've been watching me for like the last minute, that's what I've been watching. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I guess. We... I, yeah. So I, I, I really like that rule. A lot of people like that rule. So um, I'll, I'll be curious. I haven't played. I mean, you guys are kind of talking about ratings a little bit. I couldn't even tell you what my rating is. I've been, you know, I have my higher rated PDGA number. Oh, yeah. 100%. I'm still at zero. Hey, they hit 200,000. I've never played in a sanctioned round. I did. They saw hit, that. Um, yep. I have not. 
I want to say Brody I'm probably around Joe hanging out around that 900. Yeah. I think we'd be pretty close. Any given day, one of us will beat the other. Yeah. So. Yeah, we've been pretty, pretty bad. That forth, sounds about so. right. Yeah. What's that? That sounds about right. I said seeing you two play, that sounds about right is, you know, depending on the course, yeah. depending on the day. Oh, the, she got the ball. The For biggest, those wondering at home. <laughs> yeah. <got> the, ball. <laughs> the biggest thing with Joe and I is I'm far more backhand dominant, where he's more front forehand dominant. So depending Although that's on which changed way in the, the last course year. curves. Hey, my oh, forehand You're still is forehand still, dominant. I can throw the forehand as long as it's not off the tee. Yeah, but you know, that's like my biggest thing. As soon as I have to touch the tee pad of the forehand, show yeah, show hole spin. one, show hole one is a backhand hole. You can force a forehand that's, through that's there. It. I throw a backhand on that, and I have consistently parked that hole. Yeah, see, I've just learned that under stable too discs far from are my, when you can't throw a forehand under stable discs become your friend. Yes, that's been the name that's, of my. Game. All right, Eric McCabe. Yeah. <laughs> Ask James yeah. Conrad. Yeah. yeah. With that's the uh, holy shot. Still, that's that. Don't that talk to. Still uh, is still the best I've ever seen. Uh, that's oh, what's her, now I'm blanking on her name. Ace by Kevin Jones. She's also at MVP. Honestly, yes. Sarah because Holcomb. Because of the pressure that's that fair. was on her hand. That's fair. Don't don't talk to Sarah oh. Holcomb. Yeah, now she has forehand all day, podcast, every day. Yeah. We want to get to like our actual topics. Yeah. Uh, so. Going, you guys back, heard of that uh, the intro past the previous intro going back to step one on yeah. our list. Okay. I, yeah. 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 <laughs> so free agency and disc golf that we talked about initially for the first 10 seconds of this. Yeah. And have rambled for an hour since. And <laughs> as at the time of recording this, there You're hasn't been different. any update. We still, the oh, big ones, seen anything. the big ones that are still out there are Katrina Allen who left prodigy after nine years. That's Which is crazy to think. Someone's offering her big money. They the have it. Is, or, we haven't heard it yet. You know, either that or what is she looking for? I don't does know. She want, she's I, I, she's in her mid mid thirties. She's looking at, but there's part of me that thought maybe she's looking for a mixed bag. Maybe, you know, maybe she likes the other things. But when you've been that, with the same company for nine years, was it a downfall in the company? Is she look? My guess, she's been. I don't want to say a clear number two behind Paige Pierce, but she's been yeah. pushing that number two spot heavy. According if you're going to make an argument of who's taken number two at a tournament, she's in that argument yeah. every single time. Okay, mm. so according, here's something really interesting here. Sorry. According to Wikipedia, she was born in 85, so she's four, old, four years older than me, puts her at about 36-ish. Yep. Uh, um, at one point, according to Wikipedia, so Take this for what it's worth. Uh, she is divorced from Paul Ulibarri. Oh, yeah. I did not know that. I didn't know that. that Sorry. Is, I'm sure this is all old news to everybody who's been paying attention. And it really means <laughs> absolutely nothing to anyone, to anything. I don't really care. I just thought it was one of those things where it's like, oh, that's a thing. That might okay. just be one of the companies maybe she looks away from in the near future. And the I speculation say, did is... Take a, didn't he take a bigger role with his new company as far as recruitment and kind with of Discraft? managerial type status? Yeah, he's like uh, basically it's like Discraft. Eric McCabe. Right. He's the okay. team manager. He's trying okay. to... He does a lot with contracts and stuff. Uh, there is on Ulti World's Upshot podcast, there's a whole thing with him, uh, one of the guys from Innova, and Sarah Hokum. Okay. And it's actually really interesting about like the player's perspective and the manufacturer's perspective all about contracts. It It is a little I dry. So if that's not imagine. your thing, it sounds interesting, but though. it's really like if you're interested in that stuff, it's really cool. If you're I mean, not, let's be fair, if you're listening it. to us, three dumbasses talk about disc golf, that's oh, yeah. probably up your alley. It's something to listen to. Yeah. Um, that a listen after this podcast ends. So, I mean, who knows? It It's just. The other thing is, would she want to go to Discraft? She is her and Paige fight it out one and two. I mean, yep. you could. Does she really want to play? Does she want to be on the same on quote team, unquote team as Paige? Yeah, and I think that's one of the up. biggest things. I I initially thought, like I said, first thing in my mind is maybe she wants to go mix bake. Maybe that's why she maybe? Has some she's just looking for the remix bake. But but if wherever you've been she's going to end up, company for nine years. Maybe this is going to be looking, her retirement, like where I she not necessarily retirement, but. Where she ends up oh, is probably going to be the last major place she's going to go before going like pro masters. 
I mean, let's be fair. The last couple contracts that have been signed have seemed like this is where I'm going to be. This is my landing yeah. spot. When you talk I mean, about the Ricky, when you talk about the Kona, when you talk about when the you, Paul Macbeth. When you look at, he, like, you know, what Christian she Tatar, looking for. Kristen Tatar and Kona Panis, both four years, $500,000. Yep, which is awesome to see. Which you can make RJ, a pretty solid RJ case. I we were talking about that a while ago. As far as women's sports are concerned, those are awesome contracts yeah. to see yeah. in women's sports. As, as you look at I it. I mean, I wasn't joking when I said, you know, get Lil, Lily. Yeah, I know. Joe's daughter on. <laughs> and like, get a disc in her hand and yeah. get her throwing. Yeah, I got Bria that makes putts better than I do from about two feet out. She's uh, hey, probably more consistent Joe, than me. But here's the thing: like, that makes that you can make you can make a solid argument. Like, Kristen Tatar is hard to tell right now because she only was over here last this past summer for a couple mm -hmm. pro tour coming from Europe. I mean, yep. we haven't seen um, um, Hannah or uh, who's the other in of a girl, um, Hannah and. Offhand, I don't recall. I can't remember now off the top of my head. I know head. exactly who you're talking I about. Just, anyway, I had it in there. Other girl. Um, very good. If top. If those are the top were a site three that could tell us, uh, yeah. you know, well, who, who everyone is top, signed with. Those are the top three European women players. Oh, European. Okay, I was going to say because if you're talking and top you could, three, there's another free agent on the market nowadays. That Chris, Kristen Tatar kind of slapped Haley around Paige a little bit when she was here. Um, I have heard that the rumor with Haley King is that she is going to Prodigy. I haven't that heard that too. Official. Too? The I haven't heard thing... anything official, and my sources are, you know, the 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 one it, the internet golf forum I am I'm on. Yeah, Facebook posts and yeah, uh, Joe's Joe's podcast here. Yeah, um, but you know, my, the the what the rumor I'm hearing is that she's going to Prodigy. With Katrina Allen leaving Prodigy, my theory was, and, and I think I told you guys this, she wants to go somewhere where she's going to be not just the FPO face, maybe the, face, the face of the company. Here's another, here's another interesting thing that I just kind of thought about. Well, who does Westside Discs have? FPO. They've got Erica Stinchcomb. Stinchcomb she's good. The one that comes to mind. She's um, good. Her putt from distance is but awesome. She is a circle too. Is she, is she a Kayla putter? What's she, that? She a Kayla putter? A little inside her range. She uh, got more of the uh, the field ace. But you know what I mean? Like range. they don't have a decent size. Like, well, and I'm not trying to take anything away from Erica. She's a really good player, no. but you don't put her in that same level as Paige, Katrina. She, she's Kristen. not someone not right I now, can. at least not right now. Yeah, I mean, you'd she's say not the same thing I about can. Paige. I mean, you'd say the same thing about Paige Shu at Discret or at. Uh, Dynamic disc. Yep. But look at a couple of years ago, she just put it all together. Yep. And that's the one thing too that always caught me a little odd is when you talk about your world champion. Mm -hmm. It's really one event to claim a world champion with not a lot of world players. I mean, it's it's one event, but it's also yes. a huge event. What yes. is it like? Four days, multiple courses. Like, yep. It's a grind. It to is. Take that. And it is. Hey, it has you, to show consistency you gotta be on your game. multiple styles. But at the same time, you know, all of a sudden you'll hear a name, and, I, and no offense to Paige Shoe, but I remember seeing her name packing my disc, that dynamic disc, more so than I saw her as a tour pro at the time. Yep. Well, part of the you thing know. with that was, like, that was also when, I mean, all this money in disc golf is within the last two, three years. It seems yeah. like it. it. No, but it is. Which, like, it yeah. actually is. They're talking about, uh, when I was listening to Debate Night, which is part of the foundation disc golf stuff with Brody, um, Hunter, mm -hmm. and Silas. They were talking about when Ricky Did Hunter left. Like a hundred in Railer golf, by the way. I don't know. I didn't see see a resolution. I didn't finish that. the video. Um, when <sighs> Ricky well, left Latitude, he was making like around fifty thousand, guaranteed. Yeah. Which at the time that was, was that really was a solid money. chunk of money. I mean, that, I think that's when a he left regular person salary. Supposedly his contract with Innova was like a couple hundred thousand. And now he signed a million. You yeah. know. Like that's all yeah. happened. He left he left Latitude, what, six years ago? About the not time even. we were getting bigger what into disc golf. 18 or 19 is what I saw. So not even that long think, ago. I don't think it was that long ago. Yeah. I want to say maybe three. So that's how much things have changed in the last three, four years. Yeah, it's which is great for the sport. Oh yeah, I, I will yes, say it's yeah. great for the sport. Seeing these contracts, is it a risk 
on these companies for sure. Yep. Yeah. For sure. You put all your money into a couple big names. If they do something stupid on social media, here's the thing. Can, though. It can almost ruin your brand. If that becomes yeah. your brand. dynamic discs is one of the best, if not the best disc golf social media company. Out so there. far. Yeah. If you right now, online, I mean, obviously there could be Facebook. some smaller people out there. There could be, but, Generally speaking, of the big companies, they're the best. Mm-hmm. Kona and is arguably like the best on the FPO side on social media. And I, I would say Simon is probably the too. only disc golfer that beats her out consistently. Well, I would Brody, say nowadays too, because go Brody's got a huge social media platform. But he it wasn't does. Like Brody's different golf. though. That's a Brody's different. Ultimate Brody's didn't he do trick shots too? To he did that when I. He Brody also Smith did PGA guy. I was watching Dude Perfect in his battle with Dude Perfect yep. on Trick Shot. That's where I yep. learned about Brody Smith. And then I started watching some of his stuff. Yep. So but she's one that, of the best. That's been a big push is I mean, what I mean, what is a sponsorship looking for? I mean, yeah, they want to win tournaments, right? They, they want someone see, marketable. They want to see someone winning the top because if hey, if same thing with Titleist and Nike Golf and Callaway Golf, if they're winning, there's it's no because of our Nike Golf anymore. But you know what I mean? After Tiger went part of, but you know what I mean? So, They're winning because of yeah. their equipment. So part I mean, of, part of, it, of um, creating an image has yeah. definitely mm-hmm. become the focus of this sport. And I think, I mean, oh, yeah. if you listen to Waisaki when he first signed his press conference immediately, and even some of the social media after he even says, I mean, yeah, I've been playing well, but his biggest focus was he's created a platform for himself yep. and him combining his platform with dynamic that's what's selling it. two interesting things with those obviously paul Macbeth had a huge platform he had yeah. how many discs named after him well now he's going to discraft and you got the three claws the four claws you know yep. soon to be eventually the five claws he just has a what? following behind him of people that just World championships love it okay yeah uh, so so that's, one of the that's things the thing they have the scratch marks through the disc. one of the you know, cool things i, I thought with both I of these contracts yep is that Kona, one, Kona gets her own line of discs, but she's also going to be doing artwork for all of the discs. Which I, I love her there. lion. Her artwork stuff um, is they, really cool. I, so I really having wish that, that on her there, disc came with that lion yep. sun thing. It was awesome, and I was a little bit disappointed when her vandal did not come with that. Yeah, I know. But, uh, uh, and I then, know. And then with Ricky... The tour I'm like, Wait so for cool. the tour series, it's coming. Oh, yeah. And with oh, Ricky, yeah, they're yeah, doing yeah. a whole line of discs with him. So, yeah. and, I, and they're I naming them, they're naming them that. different bombs. Yep. Some sort of so, different bomb. along with the Saki bomb theme. And so no. I think he we'll needs say. a Jaeger bomb. I think he <laughs> needs. So, That's going to so be hang our on. team mascot no. here. If we keep doing You're, this thing, no really kidding. quick question. Does that mean that our next podcast, we're starting with Jaeger bombs. Oh boy. I'm always in. Jaeger I'm bomb, Jaeger bomb. I drink that, that crap like water. <laughs> um, There's an old reference right there. I did not understand that. I, I'm too young for that, apparently. <laughs> okay, I'm going to tuck out here for just a second. Yeah. So I don't Some of that stuff is interesting. So that's Katrina. Nico left West Side. Uh, he has not said a peep about that. That's what I keep hearing. Um, Because his uncle, his uncle is part owner or someone like something so, like that. So I'll be honest. I didn't know about Gateway. Yeah. Until I was in St. Louis over Christmas. Are they big? I looked up on UDisc. Um, and I was like, "Oh, what what are the nearby disc stores?" Because I yeah. I got a um a practice basket for Christmas, and I'm like, "What are the nearby disc stores?" I I, I want to know. I want to see. Yeah. And Gateway came up as I'm like, "Well, what's this?" And I looked at it. And I'm like, "Oh, this is an actual manufacturer." Um, there there's actually discs that I really really want to try. There's some interesting them. looking ones there. Yeah, and. Like, it's one of those where I'm like, it's not one of the big disc manufacturers. Yep. It's it's definitely not like it's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm one of one of the discs that I really want to get this summer is is one of their discs um, that apparently flies like a beaten buzz uh, by what is that Discraft? Yeah. Buzz the buzz. buzz. Yeah. Yeah. You got to get With enough like, Z's on there. Yeah, yeah, with apparently like five Z's. And did you get your next drink? So you know when you 
I, I mean, I should. I'm pretty much at the bottom here. I I and thought it was kind of funny. Head? I, I thought know, it was kind of funny you that... drink too much, certain bodily functions higher at a higher capacity, you know... You broke the seal. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> one of the quick. One of the cool things with Ricky's contract, he got $250,000 bonus in Bitcoin. Which is and, either going to be amazing in or the, awful. In the weeks since yeah. then. <laughs> in the weeks, I don't know when he got it or if he got it yet. I hope he didn't because Bitcoin has dropped around 15% since Monday. Hey. And you were saying that it had dropped 15, 20 percent. Yeah, in your, uh, podcast. But I mean, that's been a big thing. Even but if like he with if NFL he got it now, contract. it's going I mean, back up. Yeah. A lot of things in NFL and NBA yeah. you keep hearing, you know, the crypto. I wonder yeah. how much that's going to be a thing, because yeah. I mean, as far as the company is concerned, same amount. Right. Yeah. I'm putting fifteen hundred, fifteen thousand, fifty, you know, whatever into this. Yeah. On Ricky's end, mm-hmm. it depends. Like. Yeah. yeah, he could have lost 15 percent of his value there. He lost, you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars. But you make that deal five years ago. Uh, shoot, you make it now and it's probably going back up. Yeah. So um, we already kind of talked about Haley King. Real quick. What's that? I'm, I'm doing the same thing as Ben real quick. All right. uh, we we kind of talked about Haley King already. Uh, yeah. Last person that announced was Chris Dickerson. Yeah, that was an interesting one. I um, thought things were going pretty well for him over there. I'm I'm wondering if it's a money thing because he is also there with uh, Prodigy, and well, they and just signed Kevin Jones. Recently, as far as um, I, I can't remember who posted, I think I've seen it a couple different places. As far as MPO players that have cashed the most consistently, yeah, Caleb Vesco was number one. Yep. And Caleb Vesca is one hell of a player. Yes, he is. He does it in not the traditional sense with the way he throws and the way he approaches. Not as out there as Simon by any means. No, but like, but it works. He works. Chris Dickerson was number two with the most consecutive cashed yep. events. And what that means isn't necessarily he's taken first, but is consistently putting out a good Top high 30%. level performance. So if you're consistently putting out a high level performance and let's be fair with the yeah. contracts, the way they've been going the last three, four years, like we mentioned, if you're putting out that kind of number consistently, so why does not it go? maybe take a reach out for who's willing to pay me a little bit more? That's the question. Now, where does he go? Well, and that's the thing. There's companies popping up all over the place. Yeah. So when we decided that, hey, let's us three idiots start talking about some disc golf, I decided, you know what, I'm going to take my social media and just put a whole bunch of things out there. I'm going to follow all yep. bunch of these pages that I haven't followed before. Uh, you should see my Instagram. Players I haven't followed. <laughs> I don't even want to look at what my Facebook is nowadays. It's just disc golf everything. Yeah. But there's some new things I'm seeing out there. Um, you know, there's some company down in Texas that's starting to push. Cataplast is making a push oh, yeah. nowadays. Um, yeah, they just signed Scott Stokely. I don't know if they signed him to. I think he's still throwing mixed bag, though. Is he? Is it just to throw the bird? In some sense. Is it just to throw the bird? Because there have been, I have seen on Reddit pictures of his logo on just the bird. What's the bird? Is that their putter? The bird? It's like a zero glide putter. It's insane. Okay. Like when that thing, you can throw it. And if you throw it to go 70 feet, basically as soon as it hits 70 feet, it just drops out of the air. So the F, you know, it, once that glide is over, it just falls. Oh, yeah. When it's done, it's done. Yeah. So, I mean, you, I'm starting to see like these new companies. I mean, let's yep. be fair. Kickstarter has had how many different Loft plastic discs. brands. So, I mean, I got the hydrogen. You know, I have the Dick- Borium ordered. And I'm not saying by any means that's where Dickerson's going, but no, the but range of where you could go is growing. It's oh yeah. not just your discraft and if he a doesn't, trilogy nowadays. If it's, he doesn't care about, bunch. he could take the, the Drew Gibson approach where mm-hmm. Infinite Discs isn't paying him a ton of money. They're probably paying him a, a solid paycheck, don't get me wrong. But then he has right. the EV7 Penrose. He's sponsored for putter, that putter. I think you could make a pretty good living as without having a specific title sponsor. Like you could still have someone be your title sponsor, Mm -hmm. but you can make a solid disc golf living having four or five good deals. You know, know, get sponsored by Ridge Roller is Nico recently leaving Westside. I would, I would be willing to bet he's looked at open bag of some sort. Potentially. And if he doesn't find anything gateway, probably go back there. Cause his uncle 
he's got that familial tie there. But he loves yeah. the anvil. You know, the adder was one of the yep. discs that he helped design. Yeah, I love that disc. That replaced my stiletto. Because yeah. not no one's making like that that latitude is stable. Latitude is not making the stiletto. It's not out of production, but it might as well be. It's it's not a popular disc. It's a handy utility disc, but it's a utility. It is a very high speed, very overstable style. And the of shots I use it for, I actually use it like a utility disc. The judge or mm-hmm. the justice is just my everyday, you know, backhand, forehand mid-range. doesn't matter. I will throw that mid range. The only person I know that loves the justice. What yep. ninety? Oh, not, I don't want to say that for the style of shot he uses it for. Yes. Yep. What Joe uses the justice for is what the random person would use an emac, a rock, a buzz. Yep. Those type of shots. Joe's like, I'm going to throw my justice. It'll work. I can get it to go straight. Here's the problem is I my one, I finally got it straight. I got it beat into perfection. It is 10 feet short of hole 14 at the seminary in the pond. Which means you're going uh, swimming yes. in the next six months. Yes. If somebody <laughs> else doesn't. Was that the one that we spent like 15, 20 minutes trying to fish out with yep. your uh, golden retriever? And because it God. landed like this, yeah, it, it just oh. it used it as a ramp. The way the rocks were, the golden retriever, it just basically used it as a ramp and we could not I'm gonna get I'm going to bet it. you went home dry after that one, though, didn't you? I went home dry, yes, because yes, it was also like, it was like 20 degrees, degrees outside. Degrees. And it, when it was has cold. that stopped me after Crap. my judge? <laughs> I know. Um, Remember the time we went? Not uh, all of us are as we good as you, Ben. Was it you, RJ, that was with me? Maybe, or it might have been Ian. It might have been the day that uh, your buddy came up. Oh, that I, was for the bachelor party. We were covered in good. mud going after yep. my judge after yep. one of them. Him and I were in the water looking for a test. And it went from and like it wasn't was water. It was it wasn't ankle water. deep. It was ankle deep mud, mud that quickly turned into thigh deep mud. Yep. Yeah, if you took one it step, smelled like, That's what, so bad. I also remember calling my wife saying, you need to meet us at the park. Why? Like, don't ask questions. Just bring me new clothes. Probably bring something for Ian, too. Yep. We want to go somewhere. Like, what? Like, what's going on? Like, just bring me some sweatpants. It was like, bad. We're in trouble. <laughs> and she came up, and we're just covered in mud. I had, like, a towel in my car. We're still covered in mud, even after oh, trying to towel off. Oh, it was so bad. Off. It was a was, rough was day. Was yes. Sounds like Sweeney. <laughs> yep. Oh, Very yeah. Much. It was, uh, it was between... Seven and 14, 15. The two with the creek where they back up to each other. <laughs> yeah. yep. I don't I've remember which side, side we lost it on, but it doesn't I've matter. I've gone on both. <laughs> um, so one fun thing I thought w- that I would bring up to you guys, because you guys haven't really been following too close. The Disc Golf Pro Tour did their own Rookie of the Year, which is different from the PDGA Rookie of the Year. Uh, I forget. I think it was. I forget it's like who, a Ben Simmons situation where it's you know, depends on how you define rookie. So they defined rookie as someone who has played less than three disc golf pro tour events total ever. Prior to this. Prior to this award, basically. Okay. So this okay. like so 2021, you know, if you played three or more, you're in. So if I said that the rookie of the year had over 200 career wins, had a had played in over 300 events, and had been in the Hall of Fame long enough, where their where their Hall of Fame award would be a seventh grader. Would you believe me if I said that this FPO player was the rookie of the year? I mean, yes, because like it. it's stupid. But so it was no, Juliana Corver. She was inducted. She's been a member since 1993. I think she turned pro in 96. I don't want to know how old I was in 1993. I was four. <laughs> Three. I was one. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. But she had never, because the Disc Golf Pro Tour, it's only Disc Golf Pro Tour events, not national tour, not okay. majors, not anything like that. She had never played or played the less than three. And this year she went back on tour because I, I guess she does a lot with uh, trick shots with and like Birdie. frisbee stuff. And that was pretty much all shut down. So she went back and played still phenomenal player. Um, 
she won. And 2008 Hall of Fame inductee, she won. And people were a little upset at that. I, I could see. I mean, based off of their criteria, it, she, I think she's rightfully deserving of it. Yes, she felt yes, a little I weird agree. about that. People were talking now. Now, how would you feel if Scott Stokely wins it next year? Because that's where that's where I was going to take this. I didn't could, know if that's where you're going, but you're talking about guys that have been off tour for a while. Scott Scott Stokely has made a social media presence of himself yep. in the last couple of years. He's going around nationwide giving tours. I've seen him on some of the bigger pages of some of yep. the top players on YouTube. He does a lot of um, very, very intelligent stuff, instructional. Yeah, I think one of the, I think they're going to change. They're going to end up changing the criteria. One because of this. Two because this award was made up before they even knew they were taking over all the national tour stuff. So I okay. would, I would bet that going forward and they haven't announced this yet that they will be doing um like grandfathering in like okay so if you've been on tour before you know played more yeah. than x amount national Somehow, tour some way. yeah yeah i mean Stokely wasn't he a world champion or just national champion i but think he's, he's he's got a couple accolades to his name back I, in like the 80s and 90s i want to say that he's the guy that was always second to climo that wouldn't surprise me. Climo like, was a freak of his generation. He was like, he was Paige always right now. there kind of thing, but never like, I mean, he probably beat him here and there, but I think when yeah. it ca- came to Worlds and, and USDGC, I think it was pretty much Paul and Ricky, where mm-hmm. for a while there, it was pretty much Paul winning. And Ricky's come into it, and I think he's... Once you know, he's come into it. Yeah. Once he's come in. And, that's and now been Ricky awesome with the daggers. Woof. But I mean, that's what's awesome oh, yeah. about disc golf right now is you could look back in, you know, your 90s. It was Climo. You yeah. could look back in your early 2000s. It was Paul. Yep. Now, who is it? I mean, yeah, there's yeah. some top names. Paul and Ricky are at the top <laughs> of the list. You had Conrad win at this last year. There's yep. other huge names. Kyle Klein is coming been, up. There's been names that have come up. But right now, it's not your Tiger Woods golf. Yeah, where it's Tiger and maybe which is, Mickelson, which is great because you have just but, names on names on names coming up right now. Yeah, but does when Tiger is dominating, does that make it better? I don't know. Make it, it better if Ricky or Paul or you know Eagle. Will it make it better if they're the ones dominating and sitting out there and doing? crazy things that, that that's what I'm going to say yes me and, and no. you guys yeah we're in a weird spot right now in disc golf where yeah. we want more competition I think like one of the things that that's hurting FPO right now is the lack of your for a while it's pretty much like all right Paige is winning Paige who's coming Katrina. in second Paige and Katrina okay who's coming in third Who, who's third yeah. yeah and now you got Haley that's been making a push yeah Haley's been doing Kristen Tatar came ago. over here Yep, did Macy. well. well Macy what Valadez. I love about, Macy, what I love yeah. about the MPO side is, yeah, you have Ricky and Paul that are still killing it, but everybody's matching them. It's yeah. not like those two have fallen yeah. off. I mean, when Woods fell off the golf, there was he fell for, off. Uh, there was some off course <laughs> issues. Yes, but he fell off. And some off course issues a little bit to take over. The yeah. difference is Paul and Ricky are still shooting stupid good. Yeah, now and they're they're still working hard and getting Either better. Of them it's just eighteen down. Yeah. What's that? I said, have either of them shot 18 down recently? <laughs> I mean, to be fair, have you watched some of the courses that these guys yeah. play? You want to come up and play? Yeah, how, thing. You want to play toboggan with me this shot summer, RJ? Down, I shot that. Hell yes. no. I, I want like to see how awful my that. score is compared to that. I know. I was talking uh, to one of the local guys here. He's uh, amateur. He's going to go pro after Am Worlds. Okay. Um, that? Uh, Kevin Fodry. not say. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he um then he went Jones. and played Ledgestone this year. Uh played Eureka Temp, played all those. He said he shot a 980 rated eight over par. And I'm thinking like in my mind, my best score I think was twelve or thirteen under par, which is really good. Yeah. But not really a- good. But like Chelsea. also, I'm looking at the course, and in my mind, I'm gone. Well, I've in my career, I've aced all but two holes there. So yeah, I 
guess in the long run, when I've aced all of them, maybe 13 under isn't that good. Because if you could put it all together in one day. Oh, yeah. You know, you're sitting in the 36 like, under these pros, these top level pros, they're putting it all together in one day. Yep. I don't understand every day. It. I love watching the YouTube videos with Simon, with Eagle, oh, with yeah. Paul. And also you just see these guys hitting 60 foot putts like it's freaking nothing. Yep. And also you watch a, a Jomez production or whatnot. And it's like they're just so killing it. I it's think like, that's that's one of the stupid. cool things. <laughs> yeah, I can't do that. Yeah, that's one I, of the cool things happening with with MPO, yeah. too, is you've got Paul, Eagle, Ricky, Calvin. Kevin Jones is up Kevin there. Jones, Kevin Jones, Chris Heimer's Dickerson. I mean, Dickerson, Levesca, I mean, all yeah. those guys. And all and those so guys are FPO competing. is, and I think. Any one day, any one of them could win, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. I think it's great for the sport. And then you still have the names like Ricky and Paul. It's not like they fell off the face of yeah. the earth. They're I, there. No. Yeah, I think, I think uh, it's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's going to be exciting things. to go ahead with FPO and MPO this year. And I yeah. can't wait for the yeah. season to really get going so we can start making some predictions for like, uh, Las Vegas <laughs> challenge, Thanks. but I yeah. I think this is a good place to end Ricky. it. Also, because I my mean, wife is yelling at me that I have to hurry up and get going. <laughs> we've been at this for an hour and a half, and we've been talking for an hour and a half. Hey, so, we almost yeah. hit point point five on our list of things to talk about today. Yeah. So, so I think so. Really, um, really quickly, one of my favorite yeah. things was watching the ESPN coverage of when they did the disc golf challenge. Because I was just sitting there, I'm like. I would never dream of hitting that shot. No, it was amazing to watch them yeah. and amazing. I'm, I'm honestly really looking forward to that. Are there any things that you guys are looking forward to this year? Uh, I want to see how, or is Ricky, that next podcast? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think that's going to be next podcast. <laughs> next podcast. But just like you said, Ricky going back yep. to what yeah. he started his big push with. And I Kona with no worries. Story. Yeah. No worries. I think, I Financially think the competition sound. tightness yeah. is going to be the story mm-hmm. this year. You're not going to see your top two names all the way through. I mean, you may be wrong, yeah. but I think just seeing what everybody can do, I think is going to lead for an exciting, exciting year. So, um, yeah, I think. Thanks, yeah. guys. Uh, this was a yeah. ton of fun. I hope lack everybody out there lack enjoyed of it. Content. Now let's go lack of exit and get don't, out of here. Yeah, don't forget <laughs> to. Uh, yeah, no shit. Uh, don't forget to, uh, uh, you know, subscribe, like, like subscribe, rate the podcast. Uh, well, we have stars. a Twitter half in the bag at half in the bag DG. Uh, we have a website half in the bag DG.com where there's don't go there basically yet, there's nothing on it. no content no. there. <laughs> I did write something up there. So if you guys want to check that out or have any suggestions, uh, it is a very simple site to put it mildly. Uh, Please, but I also don't have some sort of content to try and talk about because obviously we don't do well with ourselves with the no. plans we make. We also have nope. Um, nope. Uh, this is going up on um, hosted by anchor.fm. Uh, we don't have because I don't have any podcasts up yet. We don't have a URL saved, but hopefully it'll be slash half in the bag DG uh, where if you go to anchor FM, if you create an account, you can leave us voice messages and tell us how stupid we are or, you know, give us topics. But mm-hmm. either is acceptable. <laughs> but uh, I think that will be about, better next time, but probably <coughs> I think we that won't. about wraps it up. Well, so I will. Uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Here's. <laughs> Here's with an empty glass. Yeah, exactly. My <laughs> fake glass. And fill your glass, dang it. Yeah. All right. Later, guys. All right. See ya. Later.